I recognize that the industry overall has a very positive safety record, and I want to emphasize that at this point. Um, consumer products today are um, years ahead in, in, with respect to their safety record than they were back in the 1970s when, when the commission was created. In addition, there's been a 30% decline in the rate of death and injuries associated with consumer products over the years. And this overall improvement uh, in consumer product safety certainly applies to the three billion uh, toys that are sold in the United States every year. But despite these advances in safety, the recalls of 2007 focused a glaring spotlight on the industry's lapses in quality control and alarming weaknesses in the manufacturing process. And these lapses, taken together, seriously impacted the public perception of toy safety and thus contributed, I think, directly to the enactment of the CPSIA. Although I have my concerns, which I have expressed rather openly, about the CPSIA, the fact remains that I initially welcomed the legislation. And there are many aspects of it that I strongly support. This new law represented the first change in our laws in the last 20 years, and our statute sorely needed modernization. The commission was given enhanced tools for enforcement and the ability to levy substantial penalties. Uh, the law also gave us a greater ability to deal with the safety of imported products. Um, and these are all initiatives that I suggested in a legislative proposal that I sent to the Hill early on. But I do have concerns about the legislation, and my concerns center around several issues, which I think um, make responsible regulation a little bit more difficult. And let me just run through them very quickly. First of all, the law was crafted in the heat of the moment in reaction to the toy recalls of 2007 and 2008, and it's never a good idea to enact legislation when emotions are running so high. Second, the lack of flexibility within the law in some cases ties the agency's hands and does not allow us to deal very effectively with real world issues as they arise in real time. Third, with respect to the leads and phthalates bans, um, the concepts of risk and exposure, which really are at the core of our safety statutes, those two concepts have effectively been eliminated. Instead, the mere existence of those two substances, even without any exposure, requires that we take enforcement action. Fourth, the bans on lead and phthalates are retroactive, making inventory on store shelves potentially illegal and threatening the economic viability of many small businesses. And fifth, the CPSIA, along with two other laws, which went into effect right at the same time, has more than doubled the workload of my agency, but Congress did not provide us with any additional resources. Consequently, the agency has been brought close to the breaking point, trying its best to implement the law in the way that the Congress directed us to do it and with the speed that Congress prescribed. But it has been a very, very challenging situation for the CBSC. In other words, the law and its implementation process have presented us with real challenges, and I know 
it has also presented you with some challenges as well. I probably don't have to go into a lot of detail about what those challenges are. Um, I suspect you know them better than I do. Um, but um, uh, it um, is something that I think we all have to work together to recognize and then address. And I know our Director of Compliance, Skip Mullen, is going to be uh, following me and outlining some of the things that the agency is doing to try to implement the law in a way that min minimizes um, the challenges, although we, we can't make them go away. But what I'd like to do now is just outline uh, some of the concerns that I see coming up as we work through the implementation process. Uh, the first concern, and I think the thing that is foremost in probably most of your minds, is the retroactive nature of the lead content and phthalates bans in the new law. Uh, these provisions apply to products that are made and sold um, as of February 10th, 2009, a week ago. Uh, so something that was perfectly legal and safe on February 9th, uh, on February 10th has a very different status potentially. And that applies to products that are on container ships, sitting in warehouses, and sitting in store shelves. Not only the shelves of the big retailers, but also on the shelves of the smallest thrift stop shops and charity stores. And manufacturers and retailers alike are feeling the effects of the law's retroactive impact. The commission has been asked repeatedly, how are retailers, especially small retailers, supposed to know if the products on their shelves meet the new requirements? And, and that question really goes to the heart of the dilemma that we have. While retailers and resellers do not have an obligation to test their product, products, they do have an obligation to make sure that what they sell meets the requirements of the new law. So large retailers with significant market power are now requiring testing and certification from their suppliers, even though those provisions are not yet in place. And they're sending back and refusing to accept um, a shipment of products that cannot be proved uh, to meet the new standards. Small retailers are left with millions of dollars of inventory, which they do not know if they can safely sell. And then thrift shops and charity stores which, given our current economic situation, have a very, very important role to play in our society. These groups are now questioning whether they can continue to sell children's clothing and toys. This is an untenable situation, but it is a situation that is driven by the new law. The agency has tried to calm fears by making clear that we will be reasonable in our enforcement policy. But we cannot waive the law. Only Congress can change it. The second problem that I see is with the scope of the law. And, and by this I mean, does a product manufacturer have to test and certify to the lead and phthalates requirements of the law, even if its product does not contain lead or phthalates. Uh, 